represents $750 billion in tax cuts over the next five years. And this is only the beginning, because from here on now, we are going to have to implement all of these, and it's going to be a job to make this whole turnaround work. It's going to be the number one priority, or continue to be the number one priority of our administration. Well, I miss that guy. Well, that was President Ronald Reagan exactly 40 years ago today, signing his historic tax cuts. And joining us to reflect on the economic impact of those Reagan tax cuts is economist and former presidential speechwriter, Mr. Ben Stein. He's also the author of The Capitalist Code. Ben, welcome to the show. How are you, sir? Honored to be here, sir. I'm doing well, sir. <laughs> thank you. Hey, so the oh, Reagan tax you. cuts ushered in a sustained <clears throat> period of economic prosperity, and more than 30 years later, a similar tax plan rolled out by President Trump led to arguably the greatest economic growth in modern history. So given this, why do you <clears throat> think that the left is so insistent that trickle economics don't work? Well, th this wasn't trickle economics. It never at any time was trickle economics. I have no idea why it was called trickle-down economics. I, I, it, it was a tax cut for everyone. It was a tax cut across the board. And the idea was that if there were a tax cut, people would work harder, there would be more investment, and there would be more growth. But one of the ideas also was that somehow the tax cuts would stimulate so much growth that they would reduce the federal deficit even though taxes were being cut. We did get a big period of sustained economic growth. Uh, whether that was because of the tax cuts, that's awfully hard to figure out. That's a really, really hard thing to figure out. But we did not get a cut in the deficits. The deficits grew and grew and grew. The rate of growth fluctuated, but we now have extraordinarily large deficits. And uh, I'm, I'm sorry to say uh, they're going to get to be dramatically larger. And uh, I pity my granddaughter, Coco, uh, who's going to be, uh, I'm afraid, faced with these, this burden of these cuts. It's, got, it's going to be a stupendous burden. Mm. I think many grandparents are feeling that way as well, Ben. Um, and we're, we are seeing inflation surge right now, and there are no Reagan oh, policies yes. in sight right now. This administration keeps saying, hey, this is temporary. These are going to go away. Are they? No, of course not. There's no way they'll go away. What we're doing is pumping money into the economy at a phenomenal rate, uh, be, and the money comes from borrowing, and uh, so we add and add and add to the federal deficit, and the deficit at, at some point cannot be ignored any longer. There is a this, the so-called new economics, which says you can ignore the deficits, it doesn't matter, but at some point it all has to be paid. The new economics is just fantasy land, and uh, there's, just, there's just no hope that they can be ignored. At some point, even very large, powerful capitalist countries and uh, free enterprise countries have declared bankruptcy. And uh, unless uh, some miracle happens, the U.S. will at some point not be able to pay the interest on our national debt. That, as our national debt is so large that even with very, very low interest rates, which we have now, we will not be able to pay the interest. Of course, a large part of the interest is paid just by uh, the Federal Reserve uh, creating money with a stroke of a pen. That leads to inflation. More money floating around, uh, less, uh, not a great increase in productivity, there's going to be inflation. Everyone sees it. <clears throat> Anyone who's not blind sees it every day. Ben, speaking of adding to the debt and deficit, the Biden administration continues to push this $3.5 trillion human infrastructure plan, obviously following the 1.2 uh, kind of infrastructure plan that we just bipartisanly, kind of bipartisanly passed, right? Um, so, you know, the, the Wharton School of Business actually already come out and said that 1.2 bipartisan plan, likely not going to have a positive impact on the economy. The Biden no, camp is saying that this three and a half trillion dollar plan will. Um, will it? Will it have a positive no. impact on the economy? No, it will not. I mean, there's nothing. What are they going to spend the money on? I mean, some of the things they're planning to spend the money on are just comical. Uh, more uh, broadband uh, Internet uh, for uh, inner city children. That is not the problem. Believe me, that is not the problem with the inner cities of America at all, not even remotely. Uh, that is not even remotely a big problem in America. What we need in America is harder working people. 
We don't need uh, more inner city broadband. Where the idea that somehow we're going to get a big boost in growth from inner city broadband is just a joke. I mean, they're just dumping money out to buy votes. It is standard. Mm. If I hate, I hate to say this, standard Democrat policy operations: dump money out, buy votes, stay in office. But when does it end? At some point, uh, my granddaughter's ten. She's going to have to pay for it at some point, and and it scares me. I hope to be able to leave her a some a meaningful amount of money. It's not going to be able to cover very much when the deficits are running this big. Ben Stein, as somebody who has followed you for years and appreciated your work, uh, I could let this interview go on and on, but uh, we certainly appreciate you being here with us today. I am honored. I am honored. Thank you, sir. God bless you. God bless you, madam. Same to you, sir.